Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is May the 17th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. You know, once in a while in the sport, you come across what I call a freak athlete. A guy who is so fast that you're looking at the film and you're asking yourself, how is this possible? He literally changes to paradigm. He's so fast, he doesn't have to follow the rules. The announcers are going to say, hey, this guy's making mistakes. He's leaving himself unprotected. But understand, the guy is so fast that they aren't mistakes. Not with his level of talent. Not with his level of hand speed. Understand. He has spent his life faster than the people around him, right? He's learned that the regular rules don't apply to him. His athleticism is so advanced that he can take chances other people can't take, even against very savvy, high-level opponents. So... Ali against Cleveland Williams, a fight out of the 1960s. I encourage people to look at that. Understand, Ali is a freak athlete in the 1960s, not in the 70s. In the 1960s, he's an absolute freak athlete. Manny Pacquiao against Oscar De La Hoya. I want you to look at that film. Understand, Pacquiao's hand speed is exemplary but so too was Pacquiao's power, right? So Pacquiao literally reaches a point where he's just jumping weight classes. That's his first fight at Oscar's weight class. That's here online. Another freak athlete, I'm telling you, this guy at one point looked like he was going to take over the world, was Hector Macho Camacho, a signature fight is his win over Bazooka Lamont. Right? I want you to take a look at that fight. Now we're going to talk about a fight like that. A signature moment for a great fighter. If you remember his prime, you remember he goes on a run where he makes very tough competition look incredibly bad, look incredibly slow, look like they did not belong in the ring with him. So I'm going to show you the second round. It's the round before the knockdown. The second round of unbeaten Roy Jones Jr., the underdog, going up against unbeaten James Tony. Now, if you break down fights, this fight is one of the most important fights I know of because of the difference in styles. Understand, James Tony is a master counterpuncher. He's a counterpuncher's counterpuncher. Right? Freddie Roach was asked once about the best counterpunchers he had. He mentioned James Tony. Right? James Tony is a guy who, in the pocket can lean on you and then as he leans back hit you with clever punches he's a guy who knew how to smother your punch and then come back with his own right he could counter with the best of them a signature James Tony fight is his deconstruction that's what it is of Evander Holyfield Understand, Holyfield lost some other fights. He got stopped by Riddick Bowe, I believe in the eighth round of their third fight. He never got deconstructed like he did by James Tony. But understand, Tony needs you there so he can trade bullets with you. Right? Tony needs your body to be available for his counters to the body. 
right? Tony also needs a certain pace to the fight where he's not overextended. And he's anticipating your moves. So understand, it's like a chess match where you make a move, he's anticipating you to be in a certain position so he can then counter and then collapse the pocket on you. Finish the combination. When Tony gets on a run, when Tony has cracked your code and can start to hit his counters at will, then he starts talking to you. Then he starts mocking you in the ring. He has a bully mentality. He sticks his tongue out at a Vander Holyfield. But here he's in against a freak athlete in his prime. Right? If you only saw old Roy Jones, you have no idea what you missed by missing young Roy Jones. This is young Roy Jones. Understand, young Roy Jones is so fast that when he bobs and weaves, a guy like Tony has to brace himself, has to figure out if the bob's actually a punch because it's going to get there that fast. In other words, the feints with a fast puncher have to be taken far more seriously than the feints against the slow puncher. Now, Roy Jones is fast by fast standards. He's a great athlete. He understands spacing. You're going to notice that Jones frequently, just like Tyson Fury, will stick his left hand out just to make sure the spacing is right. Right? Jones isn't going to be close enough to Tony to get hit with counters. Right? The spacing is crucial. Not only that, with hand speed like this, Roy Jones can lead. And one of the secrets to Roy Jones is that Jones, for all the showmanship, for all the hand speed, Jones had one of the best left hooks I have ever seen. Right? This is a great left hook. He leads with the left hook. If he hints at throwing the left hook, Tony has to cover up. Not only that, Jones doesn't admire his work. He's a master, an absolute master at lateral movement. In other words, he jumps in, throws punches at the counterpuncher, right? If Tony doesn't catch the left hook, that left hook's the kind of thing that can end the show at any time, right? Tony has to be obsessed with the left hook. Jones hops in, starts to throw a left hook or throw some other combination, hinting at the left hook, then he moves to the side. Right? Another thing Jones has mastered is his facial expression. Jones looks like he's reading a library book a lot of the time. Whatever Tony does, Tony can land a good punch. Jones's face looks like he's just bored. Right? He's playing to that part of the judges where you see Tony do something, then Jones looks bored, and you think to yourself, oh, that's ineffective. Roy Jones is the guy who's winning this round. Another thing with Jones is that Jones doesn't worry about where he is in the ring. So there are times where James Tony gets inside and Jones is over by the ropes. He doesn't care. Right? Now, don't get me wrong. You and I know he really cares. Right? Because Jones will quietly pivot away from the ropes at the first opportunity. But understand, Jones knows how to clinch. So when Tony dives in and tries to get him over by the ropes, Jones just quietly ties him up. He doesn't trade with him when Tony's on the warpath. 
right? Jones also knows that as he's backing away, he needs to have his hand like this and he needs to hide his head behind his shoulder as he backs away. He does that masterfully. Masterfully. Right? So understand, this is a freak athlete against a great fighter who, because of the styles, can't find the freak athlete. Can't get close enough to the freak athlete to land great counters is constantly thrown off tempo by Jones's body movement because Jones is so fast you have to read his body movement. Otherwise, the guy's going to jump in with a left hook or a straight right hand and hurt you. Also, Tony, a great body puncher, can't find Jones's body because Jones's legs are so good that Jones can move away from Tony and Jones knows to bend at the waist. When you bend at the waist, it takes away your body for the other fighter. If you can move like Roy Jones can move. So understand, this is not even the most famous round of the fight. This is the round before perhaps the most famous round of the fight. But by the end of the round, and these two guys don't like each other, by the end of the round, what I want you to do is to look at the guys at the very end of the round. Jones knows that Tony is too slow for him. Jones knows that if he can just continue to fight at this level, his A game, Tony has little chance of winning the fight. So look at the guys as they look at each other at the end of the round. I believe it's at that moment that Roy Jones understood this fight was a done deal. I hope you enjoy it. It's one of my favorite rounds of Roy Jones. Let me also say, too, there's a sequence right before the very end of the round where Roy Jones starts throwing some body shots on James Tony. right? He hurts Tony. What I want people to do is to look at how Jones, even with Tony a little dazed, is hard to find. The lateral movement, even as Jones tries to open up, the lateral movement has Jones bouncing all around Tony. This is the second round. Roy Jones Jr. versus James Lights Out Tony, November 18th, 1994. I hope you enjoy it.